Top 5 Most Powerful Couples in Middle-Earth J.R.R. Tolkien's writings include some of the most exciting stories ever recorded, spanning a vast spectrum of interesting characters and epic feats. He successfully tapped into the deepest and most complex of emotions, exploring them through various plots and relationships within his legendarium. That being said, there are numerous romantic relationships that grace the lands of Arda, such as that of Aule and Yavanna, and Tulkas and Nessa. But today, we will look at couples in Middle-earth only, focusing more on the unions of elves and men that serve as focal points for the stories we know and love. Although we appreciate them all, we ask ourselves, who were the most powerful couples in Middle-earth? 1. Beren and Luthien, 300 Beren and Luthien may be the most iconic and acclaimed couple in the history of Arda, being the first matrimony of man to elf and a very personal story to Tolkien himself. It was one he worked on throughout his lifetime, even using their names on the graves of he and his wife Edith. But amongst these titles, they also make a considerable claim for the most powerful couple in Middle-earth. Luthien Tenuviel was one of the fairest and most graceful beings of Arda, especially amongst the elves, and was the daughter of Thingol and Melian, making her a descendant of both the Maya and the Eldar. This was a unique feature of hers, amongst many. She was born in Year of the Trees 1200, in the forest of Neldoreth, in the northern lands of Doriath, beyond the Isgalduin River. And with her birth first came into the world the flower Nifredil, a white flower that could also be found in Lothlorien. Luthien's power was matched by few in Middle-earth, helping her and Beren to achieve some of the greatest deeds ever attempted. Her husband, Beren, was the son of Barahir, a famous leader of the House of Beor, and his wife Emeldir. He was born in First Age 432 in Dorthonion, but after the Dagor Bragolach, or the Battle of Sudden Flame, in First Age 455, Beren, Barahir, and ten companions traversed the highlands of Dorthonion as outlaws, earning the recognition of Morgoth from their efforts against him and the orcs that they encountered. Beren continued the folly of Morgoth even after his troop was slain due to Sauron's deceit. His name had earned respect amongst elves and men, as well as a bounty placed on him by Morgoth. He would flee south through the dreadful lands of Nandungartheb and eventually into Dorthonion, past the girdle of Melian, as no mortal man had ever done. There he stumbled upon Luthien, dancing in the forest beside the river. He called out to her, naming her Tenuviel. Cinderin for Nightingale, at that moment. She fell in love with him at first sight. The tale of Beren and Luthien is worthy of a video itself, as the expansive details of that story host some of the most beautiful, epic, and tragic events of Middle-earth and beyond. In the quest for the Silmaril, Beren is tasked with retrieving one of the three Silmarils that decorated Morgoth's crown and in his attempts to do so, displays extraordinary courage against Sauron, Morgoth, and the wolves set against him. When Feanor's son, Kurufin, attempts to kidnap Luthien, Beren takes him down and jumps in front of an arrow to save her life. He succeeds in claiming a Silmaril from Morgoth, and earns the utmost respect of King Thingol, before officially taking his daughter as his wife. Luthien would save Beren's life at least three separate times throughout this quest accepting that their fates were forever intertwined. Her grand allure caused Huon, the Hound of the Valar, to abandon the sons of Feanor and aid her and Beren in their quest. Huon would prove most valuable, slaying many of the great evil beasts, even offering counsel with his limited ability to converse with other beings. Luthien's magic allowed her to escape confinement in Doriath, to cloak herself and Beren in disguises, to lure Morgoth and his creatures into a deep slumber with her enchanting song, and to defeat Sauron in battle, banishing him from Tolin Guruth ere she freed its prisoners and destroyed its foundations. After Beren's eventual death, Luthien's grief would prove too great to bear, and she would meet him in the halls of Mandos. There she would sing a song of such magnificent sorrow that it brought Mandos himself to pity, thus leading him to Manwe for counsel on what fate should lie ahead of her. Manwe, connecting with Iluvatar through his innermost thought, gave her an option of returning to her life with no memory of Beren and their adventures, or returning as a mortal at Beren's side in a second life for both of them. She would choose the latter, and live out her days east of Doriath in Osiriand 
where her and Beren would give birth to a son, Dior, prince and eventual king of Doriath, whose line would continue to produce Elwing and thus many other important figures of Middle-earth. 2. Thingol and Melian Thingol and Melian are one of the first couples to form in Middle-earth during the first journeys of the elves toward Amman, the home of the Valar. Additionally, they are the only known relationship between an elf and a Maya. Awakening in Kui Vienen, Thingol, then known as Elwe, Quenyan for Star Man, tallest of all elves and men, was one of three elves chosen to make the journey west to Amman, with the Valar Orome the Hunter. They would see what life lies ahead of them should they choose to migrate beyond the sea to the Blessed Realm, which they eventually would. After Elwe's return trip from Amman, he and the Teleri would spend time in East Beleriand. He finds himself lost in the forest of Nan Elmoth, discovering Melian in a dance, who had been drawn to Middle-earth by her interest in the birds and natural things. Upon their meeting, an enchantment is placed upon them, leaving them frozen in place for many years after. Some of his hosts would travel on to Valinor, while others remained behind. After their awakening about two hundred years later, they would together establish the kingdom of Eglador, Doriath, and rule Beleriand for a time. They were the leaders of the Sindarin Elves, otherwise known as the Grey Elves. Elu Thingol, as he came to be known, was still considered to be a high elf, having seen the light of the trees and ruled over as a lord all lands of Beleriand. Eventually, he and Melian would surrender their efforts beyond Doriath to the more aggressive Noldor and remain behind an impenetrable border, the Girdle of Melian, established by the powerful queen of Doriath. Doriath translates to Land of the Girdle, which would deny entrance to Ungoliant, the primordial evil spider, into Doriath, and only fail to restrict the eventual comings of Beren and Karkaroth the Wolf. Thingol would go on to establish Sindarin as the dominant elf language, banning Quenyon after learning of the kinslaying Alqualonde. He would foster a young Turin, son of Hurin, whom he gifted the mighty sword of Anglakel, forged by Eol the Dark Elf from a fallen meteorite. He was the mightiest of all the Eldar, save Feanor, but died an unfortunate death at the hands of the dwarves, whom he tasked with conjoining his Silmaril to Nauglamir, a prized possession from Nagathrond. Melian, meaning great gift in Sindarin, is of the Ainur, thus her power is greater than that of all elves and men. She dwelt originally in Lorien, tending to the forest before eventually meeting Thingol, as she was a servant to Vanna, sister of Yavanna, and wife of Orome, and Este, healer of all things, and wife of Irmo. But she was most akin to Yavanna in her love for the trees, birds, and all natural things. She was proficient in song, teaching the nightingales to sing. All things in Lorien stopped to listen to her voice. Melian can feel the weight of others' grief, even releasing Hurin from the spell cast upon him by Morgoth. She gave Lambas bread to Beleg the hunter to share with Turin, making him the first mortal man to receive it. She is insightful, able to warn her daughter of Beren's capture by Sauron in the quest for the Silmaril. It is from her that Luthien receives her gifts of grace and song, and that Galadriel receives much of her knowledge of Middle-earth, including the making of Lembas. Therefore, many of the great female characters of Middle-earth can attribute their qualities to Melian the Maya, Queen of Doriath. The regal union of Thingol and Melian stands as a great force within Middle-earth, and their influence cannot be understated. 3. Tom Bombadil and Goldberry Tom Bombadil and Goldberry may very well be the most powerful and enigmatic couple on this list, for their very being is mysterious to all. They are not of the Ainur, nor of the elves, dwarves, or men. They are often theorized to be a union of spiritual beings of the woods, although not much can be concluded with certainty. They appear most prominently in the Fellowship of the Ring, where a bit of Tom's magic is on display from the very start. In his first appearance, he saves the hobbits from the grasp of Old Man Willow in the Old Forest, then invites them to his home. There they are introduced to his wife, Goldberry, who is believed to be a spirit of the River with Windle, or a river maiden. Donning a green gown with golden hair, she sang ethereal songs that mesmerized those who listened and beckoned them to join in with her allure. 
her movements reflected the sounds of a stream running over stones. Throughout their main chapter, aptly titled In the House of Tom Bombadil, we learn more about the nature of this couple. Tom proceeds to demonstrate his powerful nature by showing no interest in the One Ring, despite being able to try it on when offered it. Before they leave his home, he grants the hobbits a rhyme that, if uttered, would summon him. He is also able to detect the unseen world, the dimension in which the ringwraiths exist. Many of those at the Council of Elrond, including Gandalf, conclude he would not be a reliable figure to entrust with the One Ring. It was characteristic of Tom Bombadil to speak musically, adding melodies to his words. He is a jolly figure, with yellow boots and a blue hat, who predated the creation of the world, but not much else is known of his origins. There are many theories, such as that he is the spirit of the music of the Ainur, or that he is even Eru Iluvatar incarnate, but a frequent conclusion seems to be that Tom Bombadil simply is. That he is simply meant to be a mysterious dweller in the woods, with inexplicable wisdom and power, yet remains ambivalent of the ongoings in Middle-earth. This is even the response of Goldberry to Frodo, when he asked her who Tom Bombadil was. She refers to him also as master of wood, water and hill. He has no fear and little desire for much else other than Goldberry and his forest. He is truly a fascinating character. Tom Bombadil and Goldberry's relationship symbolizes the beautiful nature of Tolkien's universe being delightfully simple, epic, and mysterious. 4. Erendil and Elwing Few stories in Arda possess as much fantastical spectacles as that of Elwing and Erendil, and as much might be expected from one of Tolkien's earliest story ideas. Their efforts were among the most renowned in the war against Morgoth and his eventual downfall. Elwing, or Star Spray, was born in First Age 503, near Lanthir Lamath, the waterfall of echoing voices, in Osiriand, which glimmered with the light of the stars on the night of her birth. She is the daughter of Dior and Nimloth, and granddaughter of Beren and Luthien, thus making her a descendant of Thingol and Melian, and the house of Beor. She would inherit a Silmaril from her father, who receives it along with the throne in Doriath after Thingol's death after the second kinslaying at Menegroth by the sons of Feanor in First Age 506, Elwing escapes to the havens of Sirion. It is there that she would marry and produce two sons, Elrond and Elros, with Erendil. Erendil the Mariner was born also in First Age 503, in the city of Gondolin, possessing the blood of all three houses of the Edain. His parents are Tuor and Idril, and thus is half-elven like his bride. Gondolin falls when he is merely seven years old, but he survives and ends up eventually in Arvernien, at the mouth of the Sirion River, where he takes up leadership of its inhabitants. Along with Círdan, the shipwright, he builds the ship Vingilote, which he sailed often throughout the Great Sea in search of his parents. In First Age 538, several sons of Feanor attack Arvernien, in pursuit of the Silmaril, still possessed by Elwing. They devastate the region, killing many, but Elwing flees and casts herself into the sea, along with the Silmaril. By the grace of the Valar Ulmo, Elwing is transformed into a white bird with the great jewel upon her breast. She searches the sea for her husband, and succeeds, landing in his embrace. The following morning, she rises again in her natural form, telling all of the tragedy that befell them and their people. It is with this news that Erendil finally sets sail for Valinor, where he pleads for aid against the evils of Middle-earth and the final banishing of Morgoth. Being the first mortal to enter the shores of Valinor, he succeeds and is given pardon for his entry, thanks to his great deed. Elwing, refusing to be separated again, also enters the Blessed Realm and recruits her Teleri ancestors to join the host of Valinor, relations to Thingol and her great-grandfather. Thus were the actions of Elwing and Erendil invaluable to the defeat of Morgoth in the War of Wrath, First Age 545-587. to Erendil in his ship, Vingilote, was cast into the heavens, where the Silmaril on his brow would be a guiding light for generations to come. Aided by the great eagles, he would come down from the skies during battle to defeat the great Ancalagon the Black, largest of all dragons set forth by Morgoth. 
Elwing was gifted a white tower along the sundering seas where she aided seabirds, learning their language and again gaining the ability to soar with wings herself. From time to time, she and Eärendil would reunite in the skies. As half-elven heroes, the family is granted a choice, much like their forebearers, Beren and Luthien, to choose what fate they might. This powerful couple chose to remain elves. Their son, Elros, goes on to become the first man-king of Numenor, and Elrond, choosing to live as an elf, returns to Middle-earth and plays an important role in the founding of Imladris, or Rivendell, and the wars against Sauron in the Second and Third Ages. Elwing and Erendil provide a magical and uplifting story of courage and sacrifice, and wield powers unseen in any others within Middle-earth. 5. Galadriel and Celeborn Galadriel and Celeborn rank among the wisest of the elves, having thoroughly travelled the realms of Middle-earth throughout the ages. They have dwelled in such places as Lindon, Eriador, Lothlorien, and many more as individuals. They were most important to the major conflicts of the Second and Third Ages, offering both counsel and might in the war against Sauron. Although the details of their relationship specifically are scarce, it is certainly within reason to consider them for this list of powerful couples. Galadriel, born Year of the Trees, 1362, the Lady of Lorien, is the daughter of Finarfin, the granddaughter of Finwë, and the sister of Finrod Felagund. Being of both the Nordor and the Vanyar, she is ambitious and bold, as well as deeply gentle and perceptive. She additionally shares lineage with the Teleri. She is grand in stature, yet graceful beyond measure. Her silver-golden hair is renowned for its beauty, capturing the light of the two trees of Valinor, and is rumored to have inspired Feanor's creation of the Silmarils. Sensing the darkness in him, she refused him a strand of her hair on three separate occasions, causing an everlasting rift between them. Galadriel is a gifted and powerful being, even amongst her own kind. She has the capability of foresight, even able to see into the minds of others. She spared kindness for all but Feanor, and forged relationships with the dwarves of khazad who helped her reach the lands of Lothlorien from Eregion. She remains a consistent and significant force against Sauron after the ruin of Beleriand in the War of Wrath, First Age 545-587. She was gifted with Nenya, the Ring of Water, by Celebrimbor. This ring was a great source of power for her, in addition to her natural attributes. She used it to maintain Lothlorien as a land of glory and splendor, as well as a refuge for those against Sauron. One of Galadriel's great feats against the Dark Lord came in her contribution to the destruction of Dol Guldur, a fortress from whence his armies flowed. Celeborn is a descendant of Thingol, and although less graceful and diplomatic than his wife, he served as a valuable ruler and general in Middle-earth. He wed Galadriel in the First Age, after she arrived in Doriath with her brother Finrod. They would spend some periods of time apart, but often reunited and ruled in various places, most notably in Lindorinand, renamed Lothlorien, after the death of Amroth, the king of Lorien, in Third Age 1981. Celeborn is partially responsible for the founding of Rivendell, along with Elrond Half-Elvin, and led elven forces against Dol Guldur. He and Galadriel would have a daughter, named Celebrian, who would go on to marry Elrond and give birth to Arwen, and two sons, Eladin and Elrohir. The details of Celeborn's life are limited and not solidly declared, and thus he is considered to be one of the great mysteries of Tolkien's major characters. Nonetheless, his marriage to Galadriel is of the most significant in Middle-earth, and their strength would prove vital to the deterrence and defeats of Sauron.